When you compress propane gas, it turns into a liquid. And as a liquid, it's much more compact, which means you can pack it into small containers. Opening the valve converts it back to gas, giving you energy that you can put to good use. Bottling energy means you can always have fuel on hand. To make these tanks, they start with a big coil of steel. A press punches out three discs, 50 centimeters in diameter, in each swoop. A second press clamps the discs as a cylinder-shaped die thrusts upward, transforming it into a shell. Each shell is one half of a barbecue tank. Next, suctioning devices carry the tank shells over to a trimmer, where a blade gives it a neat edge. Workers then insert flanges into pre-punched holes in the top shells. The top and bottom halves of the tanks now move in separate directions. The tops head into an automated welding station where the flanges are fused to them. The weld has to be perfect so it can take the pressure of compressed fuel without exploding. This die simultaneously bends steel strips into rings and punches holes in them. These rings will be used as pedestals and the holes can be used to mount the tank to a barbecue. Next, a machine welds the rings to the bottoms of the tank shells. The top and bottom tank shells converge. And a pusher device nudges the tops onto the bottoms. They load each freshly assembled tank onto a welding lathe. The lathe turns as an automated welding gun follows the seam precisely, melting and bonding the two pieces together. But this processing has hardened the steel. Not a good thing, because these tanks will need to expand and contract to accommodate pressurized fuel. So they temper the tanks in a furnace. They do random tests of the welded seam. They cut out a piece of the tank and grind it on both sides to expose the weld. Then they use a jack to bend the sample right at the seam. If it doesn't split, it passes the test. In another test, they lower a tank into a water-filled drum. They pump water into the tank, causing pressure inside the drum to rise, proving the tank will expand with pressure changes. The tanks then travel down a row of paint guns, which spray them with electrostatically charged powder paint. The tanks journey over three quarters of a kilometer to an inspection station. Here workers check for contaminants. Then they drop valves into the flanged openings and place the cylinders in a special machine that screws the valves on tightly. In one final test, they submerge air-filled tanks in water. If the water doesn't bubble up, it means the valve isn't leaking. And after all that, these barbecue tanks should be able to take plenty of grilling. <laughs>